Hey guys, today I will be showing you and explaining how to tune an Edelbrock carburetor. All Edelbrock carburetors are relatively the same and this goes for any vehicle. This application is a 60LS. Let's get into it. Alright, so the first things I'm going to talk about are the few things you will hear me reference quite often. The first things I'm going to reference are those two little flathead screws right there. Those are your idle mixture screws. One other thing I'm also going to mention is this little guy right here. That is your accelerator pump. Another thing I will mention are these two little flaps right here on the edge. Those enclose your metering rods and your metering rod springs. So that being said, so that being said, let's get into the first topic we're going to talk about and that's going to be the idle mixture screws. In the Edelbrock book, they do a decent job explaining these idle, idle mixture screws and what they do is what they do is this screw controls this half of the carburetor, the primary and the secondary. This screw controls this half of the carburetor, your primary and secondary. Splits the carburetor in half. Similar to a Holly has individual bowls, this carburetor is split in half. The bowls are in the back of the carburetor but on the sides, you know, vice versa. Edelbrock does a pretty decent job explaining how those operate and how they work. So, like I said, they separate one side of the carburetor from the other. They state in their book that you set your desired idle, which it'll be a little rough. Then you turn the screw in and out until you exceed the maximum RPM, which should be no greater than 40 RPM at a time so you do one screw you turn it in or like is what I like to do is very carefully you turn it all the way in not tight you don't want it tight you just want to turn it in very slowly with a screwdriver until it stops because you don't want to break the needle off on a needle and seat then is what you do is you turn it out until you get the smoothest run I turn that one out until I get the smoothest run luckily for me I have an air fuel ratio gauge on this vehicle so I can see what my idle air fuel is otherwise that is what Edelbrox ca calls your best lean idle mixture say add some other technical words so that's how you tune in your idle mixture screws very very important for idling otherwise it would hit like a thousand rpm and just want to die it'll want to die it'll run like crap so that's very important then is what I did is this is an 800 CFM I just went out I took it for a ride I seen how it did I stepped on it I watched my air fuel ratio gauge lucky enough to have an air fuel ratio gauge to watch and I was running into an issue or a concern and that would be at a low RPM when I would put it to the floor it would go lean and it would sputter pop bog down lean and then when I would go from about quarter throttle to half throttle to pass somebody, it would get really lean and you'd hear like a whoop, whoop, whoop. It'd have like this, this sputter or this chop. So knowing that it was lean, I went and got an Edelbrock calibration kit. The Edelbrock calibration kit comes with jets, metering rods, both sides, and metering springs. One thing I read on the internet that I thought I'd try, just so I'd have a little more basis to go off of, Mind you, the newer Edelbrocks don't come with a fuel mixture chart, um, is what I'm referring to is the old Edelbrock books, they give you this nice chart, and say you have an example, when you're cruising around you have this lean mixture, and when you're on the throttle you have this rich mixture, well you look at what metering rods your carburetor has, and what jets it has, and this chart on a graph will show you where you are on that chart. So then you can decide where you want to go from there if you need to be richer or more lean or whatever. So these newer ones don't have it. So what I did is I did some research. I went right on Google. I said lean bog. Well, the first video I seen or the first form I looked at told me put some stiffer springs in it. Okay, for the, me the metering rod springs is what I'm talking about. Okay, I put some stiffer springs in there. That made a difference. Then I was like, all right. I have an issue here it's still doing it but it did make a difference so is what you want to do is a lot of people will show you tuning with a vacuum gauge and all this other stuff 
if you have a way to determine if you're lean or rich, which is very easy because the first telltale sign, look at your exhaust pipes. If there's not a whole lot of soot in there and it's pretty, you know, dry, so to speak, you're definitely very lean. Now, if it's really rich and you got a lot of black powder around your exhaust, well, then you're extremely rich. So going off of that, I said, well, I'm lean. So I went and I looked at the Edelbrock book and it told me I had 104 jets on both primary and secondary and I had a 6552. Not all Edelbrocks are going to have that. Now that's your metering rod. And what that is, is on the metering rod, there's a chamfered edge. The top one, the real long one, is going to be your cruising. And the, the 6552, the 65 stands for thousands. That's the size of the rod. Then you have your power mode. It, it chamfers down with a bevel and it's real thin. So they, they tell you, well, you know, the smaller the rod, the more fuel it lets pass the jet, lets by the jets, because those rods do go down to the jets inside the motor. I mean the carburetor, excuse me. So I needed to be a little richer. So I worked my way down, as in size of the metering rod. I went to the next size smaller metering rod. It made a difference, but it wasn't much. Then I went again and again. Edelbrock usually says if you have to make more than two changes of metering rods, two sizes smaller, you got the wrong size car. Well, I went three, but I only went three because this is the second biggest carburetor Edelbrock offers. Their Thunder series is very hard to come by and those had 113 jets. This has got 104. So as of currently, as of Edelbrock's promotion, they offer this as their biggest carburetor. So is what I did is I accepted that I went down three steps then factory and I left the 104 jets in it but I went to those stiffer springs those metering rod springs they control how many inch pounds of vacuum the motor needs to create in order for those metering rods to come up and go into the power mode so basically in English is what that's saying is when you mat it to the floor the the motor has to pull a certain amount of vacuum in order for those metering rods which are, are on a spring for them to come up and go and give you your secondaries so i put the eight inch pounds in there and it made the secondaries come in later with the secondaries coming in later it was able to mitigate the way the carburetor acts and it was able to basically control the carburetor a lot more which the way I explained it in the way I said it really doesn't make sense that a stronger spring which makes the secondaries come in later would help me with my lean bog but it helped me with my lean bog because because the throttle blades were opening and there was no fuel so with those stronger springs I was able to have the primaries open for a longer period of time and then the secondary uh, throttle blades would open and then it would be in a secondary jet position now I haven't tried a softer spring I might be a little better off with a softer spring I don't know I just know that the stiffer spring did make a difference for my application so you can try those they have from 8 to 2 inch pounds I believe they come in their calibration kits uh, that's really easy to change you just turn these screws out like two turns you don't want to take them out but just enough so you can turn that flap around and then the whole metering rod and piston and spring comes right out real simple real easy not very hard at all to do change the springs that's the easiest thing to try the metering rods they're even easier you just pull a little tab you can slide the old rod out put the new one in very easy very simple that allows you to get a lot more tuning done I'm not going to explain jets because you know people know mostly their application say if you got a stock 350 well you're not going to put an 800 cfm on it so relatively the jets from factory are pretty dang close to your application you know if you're in perspective like i said you're not going to put an 800 on a stock 350 you're going to run something more like a 650 or a 600. so that being said the jets really aren't that big of a deal unless you're having a radical camshaft um, big free flowing headers, single plane intake, and you're making crazy horsepower. Well, then you already probably know how to change your jets in your carburetor, and you're not the guy watching this video. So, that.
That being said, very simple. A lot of people don't talk about that on the internet. The metering rods and the metering rod springs are a lot more simpler to change than I ever thought. I didn't know they were that simple. I honestly didn't. So that's what I would try. And just remember, if you want a richer mixture, you need a smaller rod. If you want a leaner mixture, you need a bigger rod. As far as springs go, that's going to be a little bit of playing around because that's going to be more of an application. And as far as the set screws go for the idle mixture screws, you want to find your cleanest, smoothest running with both screws and then adjust your idle to coordinate to bring you back to your idle. Very simple. I wanted to make this video dummy proof. Not saying everybody watching the video is a dummy, obviously, but I was that guy that didn't know at one point in time. So I felt like, you know, hey, this might be worth it to just throw a YouTube video out there because there's probably more people like me out there. One other thing that I just noticed I didn't touch on, and that would be the accelerator pump. You got three holes here. Now this, the, the upper hole, as you can see, is really got an extreme angle on that accelerator pump. So the upper hole gives the truck, or the carburetor I should say, the most fuel when you mash it. So that means when this opens all the way up, that's the accelerator pump position that gives it the most amount of fuel. The bottom hole, least amount of fuel. The middle hole, that's kind of a horse apiece type thing. That's very simple. The only thing you got to do is not lose that little tiny hairpin. If my camera can focus here, don't lose that little hairpin. They're not easy to find. In fact, very impossible to find. So if you can manage not losing that, that's one also very easy adjustment to make. So that be it. That's how you tune an Edelbrock carburetor. It's not the most professional video out there. I'm not showing a lot of hands on, but if you want to know how to tune your carburetor, you want to know how to tune your carburetor. You don't want some fancy video. You just want to know and you want someone to show you where to go because if you got a Edelbrock carburetor on your truck, you're probably a hands-on, you know, mechanical kind of guy yourself, so you should know what you're doing relatively speaking. So, Thanks for watching. Thanks for viewing my video. If you have any questions and concerns, leave a comment. If you're new and you want to see some square body content, like and subscribe. I do a lot of square body stuff. Thank you guys for watching. And I hope the channel rocks tuned in.